With me now, co-hosts of the Suburban Women Problem podcast, Amanda Weinstein and Rachel Vinman. Rachel, you have a personal connection to Liz Cheney. She stood up for your husband on the day he spoke to Congress. How have you felt watching the Republican Party turn away from her and toward former President Trump? Well, it's disgusting. It's, you know, they're telling us, they're telegraphing loud and clear, the Republican Party is no place for a woman who wants to stand up for the truth. It's only a place for women who are willing to toe the line for the male leadership. They cannot have their own opinions. Amanda, what are you hearing from other suburban women about Trump's grip on the GOP? It's really awful. They feel like they're not representative. The women who I know, they're steadfast in their values and they feel like the GOP has turned away from them that they don't represent their own values and they represent one person, one man, and not the values that they grew up with. Yeah, I mean, Rachel, I think what is so interesting here is that what we're watching is not an ideological schism, right? We're not talking about whether someone is conservative enough or has the right policy mm -hmm. positions. We're talking about one metric, and that is loyalty to Donald Trump. If we were instead having a conversation about values, about policies, what is it that suburban women would be wanting to hear from this GOP? Well, Alicia, I have thousands of letters in my dining room right now that people wrote to my husband after he was fired from the National Security Council, and 80% of them say the same thing. There is a hunger, there is a craving for morals and values in the United States today. And that is what suburban women want. We want, we want it for our families. We expect it in our families. We teach it to our children, and we want our leaders to model it. I want to hear from each of you on this. And Rachel, I, I'm going to start with you, which is, I think, part of the question, as people hear you say that, is do those voters then, in a next election, stay home? Do those voters hold their nose and vote for a Republican? Do they go out and vote for one of these third party candidates that we're now hearing more about? Or are these voters who will entertain the possibility of voting for Democrats? So, Rachel, I'm going to start with you. When you talk to these women, how are they thinking about their vote choice in the next election? Well, I think it's a messaging issue. It's a thing that we've got to talk to each other. We've got to explain there's not a boogeyman in charge of democratic policies that some suburban women might find objectionable. We need to have the conversations. And the Suburban Women podcast is about having those conversations, women coming together, talking to each other, listening and hearing where other people are coming from on some of these very divisive issues like the rights of trans children, critical race theory, voting rights. We need to hear from people and why these issues matter. And I think if we can talk to each other and we can come to an understanding, you know, they're going to see, just continue to see the schism w between these values, um, these things that are important to them and the Republican Party. So Amanda, and, I, yeah. you know. I mean, I come back to this question, though, which is if you do bring people to the table and they do have this conversation mm -hmm. and you do say, listen, a lot of these issues that we're that are they're being the loudest about are really wedge issues. Right. What then does that mean for that voter when they actually have to either, you know, send in their mail in ballot or go to the polls and vote? Who are they then pulling the lever for? I think they'll pull the lever for policymakers whose policies align with their values. What we hear from the Republican Party is fear mongering, and that doesn't work with women. I ha was forced to give birth with no epidural because I had precipitous labor. There's nothing they can throw at me that's going to scare me. So they're going to have to come up with something other than fear mongering, and it's going to have to be policies. And suburban women have ideas on policies. We have ideas on childcare, on health care, on schools, on education, and those are things you don't hear the Republican Party talking about. And so when women go in and vote and pull that lever, they're going to vote for the politician, for the person who is talking about policies that matter to us, that matter to our families. And those wedge issues might work for some, 
but it's not working with suburban women. Suburban women want to hear policies that matter for our families. What I find very resonant about what Amanda is saying there, Rachel, is that one of the things we have heard time and time again about women's participation in politics, whether it is women participating in politics as voters, women participating in politics as someone who's actually going to run for office, is this idea of feeling that we don't know enough, that we have to be even better armed, have, have deep knowledge of all policy issues, when in fact our data a day lived experience is in and of itself an expertise. I, I, I wonder for you, having you know been a, a relatively private person and now coming out publicly and sharing your political experience, what it is that you have learned from all of this? I've learned something that I've been learning for a vast majority of my life, that people are more alike than they are different. You need to find a common place and start from there and then just have a discussion and have a talk. Right. Amanda is right when she says, you know, we've, we've got to just, we've got to trust women and trust their instincts. They're gonna go and they're gonna vote for a person. And that's what candidates have to do is not become a policy wonk inside the beltway. They need to be a human being and relate to women and our experiences are changing. Our experience in the suburbs, the suburbs are less homogenous. People are having experience with all kinds of different people than they did before. And those experiences are informing their political views in a very rapid, at a very rapid pace. All right, Amanda and Rachel, thank you both.